Welcome to another episode of the Clinical Career Collective Soap News. For those of you who are new to us and our mission, C3 is a professional development community for the mental health professional at large. We are here to support you so that you can learn, advance, and become the clinician the world needs now. You can find us at our website, www.clinicalcareercollective.com, and on our YouTube channel, Soap News. And of course, we're extending an invitation to join our C3 Facebook page at Clinical the number two professional, that's at clinical two professional, and like us on our LinkedIn page at Clinical Career Collective. Today's soap note is all about the social isolation and loneliness that people may be experiencing while working remotely. It's hard to stay connected and feel like you are part of a team when everyone is in a different physical location. But with the right strategies, working from home doesn't have to be so lonely. Hi, I'm Amity Cooper, your host and creator of The Soap News. As a trained clinician, I really benefited from applying the soap note method in my practice. So when I started C3, I thought it would be a really fun way to craft a blog series that incorporated the same principles as the reliable and handy soap note. What better way to get updates, tips, inspiration, and reviews about relevant on-point clinical and business topics affecting our industry today? So let's jump into it. There is a big difference between working remotely by choice versus working in an office. Working from home by choice brings many benefits to the lives of workers such as flexibility, productivity, independence, time saved on commutes, the comfort of a fridge nearby, and of course your own bathroom. But if you are a worker who has a flex schedule and or a remote work contract or even a freelancer, this lifestyle can come with some drawbacks. The pandemic brought to the fore some of the most emotional and psychological disruptions caused by remote work. Some people reminisced and craved the social interactions they took for granted, like the morning commute or gatherings around the coffee pot on breaks. Even simple tasks like walking a report over to someone's desk and getting a smile in return seem much more meaningful in hindsight. As our lives slowly return to normal, it's important to remember that we are social beings and as such, maintaining a social life both inside and outside of work is a key ingredient to a productive, enjoyable, and purposeful work from home experience. Work from, sorry, work friendships are much harder to form when you're not working in person. And although Zoom, Skype, and other video chat systems can help with communication, they too come with their own set of issues. As companies begin to welcome their employees back to the office, it is important to address these emotional disconnection, the emotional disconnection workers have felt. Even though most are excited to return to work, they fear and can and suffer from continued psychological side effects of loneliness, social isolation, stress, and and anxiety. Studies on post-pandemic work environments are sounding the alarm. Poor and or inconsistent social interactions can lead to negative health effects and a decrease in working performance. In a 2020 State of Remote Work report, remote workers revealed that the biggest issue they were facing was loneliness. In an in-person working environment, there are many opportunities for human interactions and friendships to develop. These friendships formed at work are increasingly important to a person's overall sense of belonging and mental well-being. Writer Annie Dillard famously said, how we spend our days is of course how we spend our lives. And for most of us, a large portion of our days are spent at work. In fact, the average person will spend 90,000 hours at work over a lifetime. Noting this fact, it's imperative that companies evolve with the times and start to engage and support the remote workforce. According to Adam Hickman, PhD, perceived workplace isolation can lead to a 21% drop in performance. And this isolation itself is a structural issue, but it can contribute to a person's feeling of loneliness. Adapting our face-to-face interactions to virtual ones poses problems as well. People are having a difficult time translating each other's digital communication styles and are becoming increasingly burnt out from virtual meetings. 
The physical distance separating remote workers from one another can also cause isolation. This occurs when workers feel cut off from their peers and are unable to get access to the information, materials, and support that they need to make their jobs easier or better. Working remotely has different side effects that vary according to, to a variety of factors. After the forced experience of working from home, which many workers experienced during the pandemic, some are ecstatic to see their office spaces opening up again, while others dread the long commute and the need to put back on that work-appropriate attire. Different factors, including personality, family size, house or apartment setup, and an allocated workspace play a role in determining how successful and enjoyable remote working will be. For example, the combination of working from home while living with a big family was found to increase pressure and stress on the individual. Couples struggled for work time and space. Parents got caught between homeschooling and work meetings, and adult children returned home to the nest after being independent. It wasn't just the job either. Therapists and clients alike struggled to figure out how to provide therapy. Therapy sessions were either conducted from your car or your closet. Either way, it was really uncomfortable. Considering that overall job satisfaction is often linked to the friendships people are able to form at work, it makes sense that those friendships were put to the test. In one study, the benefits of remote work were said to plateau after 15 hours a week from one for an employee, and the average work week for an American-based employee is around 34.9 hours a week. So if 15 of those are spent remotely, many workers are exp are expressing the benefits and wish to continue with this lifestyle. The flexibility of a workplace location, which increased for many offices during the pandemic, has led to the increase of nomadic workers. Pre-pandemic remote workers made up 17% of the workforce. Today, it's 44% according to a, a, st a statistic report. A December 2020 study conducted by Upwork called the Future of Workforce Pulse Report found that as businesses adapted and learned from this remote work experiment, many are altering their long-term plans to accommodate this way of working. Companies have discovered that it can be cheaper to operate with remote workers and in some cases have decided to get rid of their old office spaces altogether. To note, it's predicted that one in four Americans will be working remotely in 2021 and beyond. This is not going away anytime soon. So it's something that we really need to adapt and adjust to, especially if you yourself as a therapist are considering working remotely or not going back into an office and choose to work from home, this is something that you're going to be seeing not only within yourself and your peers, but also in the clients that you are going to be seeing. Many of them are going to be working remotely as well. The Upwork report also noted there has been a 70% positive uptick in non-essential meetings, 60% increase in flexibility at work, 34% increase, increase in autonomy, and 44% increase in less distractions with employees working remotely. So basically, all of the negative attributes of working in an office have changed, and people are finding that they can set their own schedules, that they're encouraged to work autonomously, and set their own course, their own strategies with meetings, the checking in with meetings that actually mean something rather than wasting time. It is a game changer for organizations and for workers across the board and globally. All being said, even though remote work offers a great deal of flexibility and control over your time, it doesn't bode well for socializing or fraternizing. As an entrepreneur, you may not only be working from home yourself, but you also find yourself hiring remote, remote workers of your own. It's important to check in with these workers and ensure that they have the tools they need to be successful. 
Make sure that they have access to the materials and programs required for their work, and you reach out to acknowledge their achievements. Set regular feedback accountability calls. This is very, very important. When you are remote working, uh, it very often you just have yourself for company. And what I've talked about in this snow note is it's essential that workers can sort of be encased in their own work bubble and they're not really sure what's going on if they're hitting their target metrics. Um, they don't get the feedback that they would normally get with their team um, every day um, in in pop-in meetings or or just those conversations. So it's important that if you do hire freelancers or bring in contractors into your businesses, that you set up systems that do these regular connect, um, that offer connection and accountability and feedback. If you are still in the beginning stages of starting your business, you might not have other employees to worry about but you can still take steps to take care of your own mental health. This is where self-care really comes in handy. Entrepreneurs who have feelings of loneliness for a multitude of reasons, working remotely only adds to this issue. So take the time to nurture your relationships with family and friends. Try to celebrate your own successes as they come. Reach out to peers in your field for support, referrals, and networking opportunities. Don't be an island, stay connected. It's important to have a support system when things get rough. We need people around us that we know we can lean on. And that lack of working friendships and interactions, which would naturally come along with a co-working office space, does pose that dilemma. But by deliberately nourishing personal and professional relationships, we can strengthen our own mental well-being. And as a note, If you are experiencing loneliness right now or feeling depressed or anxious, therapy is always an option for you. And of course, there are numerous online mental health apps that you can access 24-7. So be sure to check out 7cups.com or robot.io. Both are wonderful resources if you just need to have a listening ear on the other end. Working remotely can encourage productivity when done correctly. It offers an excellent opportunity to develop your time management skills for overall work-life balance and gives people a chance to create their own office setting or even travel as they work. It can be rather exciting. If you're thinking about giving remote working a try, consider the effects of the pandemic on your work and mood. If you crave connections with others and are currently working from home, try finding a part-time job, volunteering for a charity of your choice, join a club, or start taking that class that you've been considering. Get a hobby. This will get you outside and engaged with others in no time at all. Lastly, if you're interested in learning more about the new and cutting edge technologies affecting our mental health practices today, then I'd like to invite you to register for our monthly SOAP newsletter. With this subscription, you will receive a monthly review of all the weekly SOAP notes, gain access to member-only interviews and conversations with special guest speakers, and you will have a chance to purchase our monthly SOAP box that contains products, coupons, and discounts to all our mentioned items reviewed during the SOAP note recordings. I hope you enjoyed this SOAP note. I will see you next time and to your clinical success.